What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. We're doing a CP breakdown here, so a chem and phys breakdown. It's that section. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to read the passage, how to you know make all the details make sense, how to remember the details in the passage so you don't forget them when the question asks for it. I'm going to show you guys how to pick the best answer, where to highlight, all that stuff. So before I go ahead and break this down, do it on your own first. Do it on your own first, okay? This is question 40. All right. Pick your answer. Write it down. 41. Pick your answer. Write it down. 42. Pick your answer. Write it down. 43. Pick your answer. Write it down. And 44. Pick your answer and write it down. Okay. I'm going to show you guys how to make the MCAT easy because it is easy. All right. Let's begin. Creatine is one of the eight naturally occurring guanidine-derived compounds and is synthesized from three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine. I'm going to highlight what I didn't know before. I didn't know that the creatine is made out of these three. Okay, that might be important, so I'm going to highlight it. I'm highlighting it to make a mental reminder. Okay, when I highlight things, I'm telling my brain, hey, remember this little detail here, Okay. The best natural sources of creatine are meat, fish, and other animal products. And the average creatine intake from dietary sources is estimated to be one gram per day. As plants are very low in creatine, vegetarians rely solely on internal creatine synthesis. All right. Vegetarians rely solely on internal creatine synthesis. I did not know this before. I didn't know that vegetarians rely solely on internal creatine synthesis. All right. In humans, over 95% of the total creatine content is located in skeletal muscle. All right, skeletal muscle, that's where it is. Approximately one third of this is free creatine, and the remainder is phosphorylated. Creatine, creatinine, I'm sorry, creatinine is formed in muscle from creatine phosphate by a non enzymatic dehydration and loss of phosphate. Okay, this is how creatinine is formed. The amount produced is related to muscle mass and remains remarkably constant from day to day. So the more muscle you have, the more creatine you're going to have. They give us a figure here. We only look at the figure when the question asks for it. Let's keep going. Creatine supplementation has become mainstream in athletic training and competition. During exercise, ATP is hydrolyzed to form ADP. As energy demands increase and ATP is depleted, the body begins to utilize creatine phosphate stores. These are broken down to produce creatine in a high energy phosphate group, which is used to reform ATP. Okay. I'm not really going to highlight much here because I already knew, I already, you should know already about creatine and why our body has creatine and creatine phosphate. Okay. That's content review right there. You should know that. If creatine stores are low, Fatigue sets in much faster and exercise intensity is reduced. Okay. Creatine is rephosphorated during periods of recovery. This I did not know. So I'm going to highlight this. This is dependent on oxygen supplies and muscles can typically restore 50% of their creatine phosphate levels in about one minute. All right. There are three types of creatine supplements, creatine monohydrate, creatine phosphate, and creatine citrate. Creatine monohydrate is the most common and is simply creatine bound with water. This is simple, okay. Each molecule of creatine monohydrate is made up of 88% creatine and 12% water by mass. So creatine monohydrate, a lot of creatine. Creatine phosphate is more expensive than creatine monohydrate and has never shown to be more effective. All right. Phosphate is not Creatine phosphate is shown to not be more effective. That's what's important, okay? We're highlighting things that stick out to me. In addition, creatine phosphate is only 62.3% creatine and 37.7% phosphate. So creatine phosphate, less amount of creatine in there than creatine monohydrate. Creatine citrate became popular because it is more water-soluble than other forms of creatine. So citrate is the water-soluble form. 
and dissolves better, but it is only 40% creatine. When taking creatine supplements, one must also take into consideration the absorption of creatine into the muscle cells. Studies have shown that consumption of simple carbohydrates at the time of supplementation improves uptake. Okay, so carbohydrates improves the uptake of creatine, whereas consumption of protein has the opposite effect. Okay, so protein has the opposite effect. It doesn't it hinders creatine uptake. A study was conducted on six subjects to determine the effects of creatine supplementation on muscle creatine levels. All right, and as always, guys, when you are reading and you get to the point where they are about to introduce the experiment and the results, you should have some type of um, prediction in your head. Okay, some type of prediction on what the results are going to be. So the prediction in my head that I'm making right now is that the supplement that has the most amount of creatine is going to have the most amount of creatine levels, okay, in their muscle. So meaning the creatine monohydrate, I'm sure, is going to be shown in the results to have the most uh, creatine in the muscles than like creatine phosphate, all right. Quadriceps muscles biopsy were taken before and after three months of supplementation with 20 grams of the respective creatine types, and the creatine concentrations were analyzed. The following table summarizes the results from the study. They give us a table here. Wow. Long passage. But let's do this, all right? Remember, guys, the questions are the easy part. The passage can be a little complicated here and there. This passage was not complicated. It was just long. It was just long and a lot of information, okay? Crown ethers are a family of compounds often used to aid in the crystallization of compounds bearing amine entities from cold ether type solvents. How do these compounds aid crystallization? Okay. Crown ethers, um, they're pretty low yield. This is what you have to know about them, okay? Since there's a lot of oxygens here, all right, they're all lined up pretty symmetrical here. It's a lot of negative charge from these oxygens. They're going to trap cations inside there, inside this here, in this area. They're going to trap cations. Okay, the bigger the crown ether, the bigger the cation it could trap. And basically, they're going to do that so that they can dissolve charges, okay, charged ions. They can dissolve those in ether solvents. That's the point of crown ethers. Okay, that's what they do. A, crown ethers greatly decrease the polarity of the solvent, causing crystallization of the... No, they don't influence the polarity of the solvent. All right, they don't do that. Crown ethers are not miscible in ether solvents and act as inhomogeneous sites for crystal... No, they are, um, they are soluble in ether solvents, okay? The crown ether saturates the hydrogen bonding capabilities of the amine, decreasing its interaction with the solvent this could be true okay we can hide that amine that's positively charged we can you know hide it in here and because it's hidden in there okay because of that it's not going to be able to interact with the solvent on the outside all right it's hidden in here the crown ether hit it so i like c d the crown ether hydrogen bonds with solvent molecules preventing them from interacting with amines in solution it does not do any type of hydrogen bonding with the solvent that's not what it does. Okay. Traps um, charged cations in there. That's what it does. So the answer for this one is C. Which of the following statements regarding creatinine is least likely to be true? All right. So A, the amount of creatinine produced per day will be relatively high in bodybuilders. They told us that the amount of creatine produced is related to muscle mass All right, and remains remarkably constant from day to day. So this is true. The more muscle you have, the more creatinine you're going to have. So this is wrong. Okay. Allosteric regulation does not affect the formation of creatinine to creatine. Well, here's creatinine and here's creatine. There could be some types of regulation. Okay. Whenever you guys see um, rate limiting, you know, one arrow, not the double arrow. That means that there could be allosteric regulation going on here. All right. So this is true. So this is wrong. Vegetarians will produce less creatinine than meat eaters. Vegetarians, 
they can they, they won't produce less because they rely on internal creatine synthesis okay remember we highlighted that we highlight things we, to remember the details all right if you did not highlight correctly here you might have would have got this wrong all right or you might have overlooked that so this is Regions will produce less creatine than meat eaters. This is least likely to be true. Okay. They produce the same. They rely on internal creatine synthesis. All right. D, in general, males will produce more creatine than females. Males have more muscle mass than females. Therefore, they will produce more creatine. So D is correct. Process elimination, the answer is C. Hope you guys got that one right. Let's keep going. If a mutation rendered creatine phosphokinase non-functional, which of the following is most consistent with feedback inhibition of this biosynthetic pathway? All right, let's see. Where is the, oh, here's the pathway. And here is creatine phosphokinase. If we render this one non-functional, so this one's not working, what do you think is gonna happen? All right, so this goes to this, this makes this. this oh, we can't make creatine phosphate, so we're going to have elevated levels of creatine. All right, because we have elevated levels of creatine, this is going to have a feedback. It's going to have a feedback saying, hey, stop making, stop making all this. All right, this is going to go be a feedback. It could be on this, it could be on this, it could be on anything here. Most likely, it's going to be on, I believe, this one here because we're making ornithine here. So most likely it's gonna act on this one. All right, is it gonna increase or decrease these levels? Well, inhibition, inhibition decreases. So we're gonna be decreasing something here. All right, so we're gonna be decreasing arginine, we're gonna be decreasing glycine, or we're gonna be decreasing guanidoacetate. So A is wrong, okay? We could have increased creatine levels, but they talk about inhibition, all right? So that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking, consistent with feedback inhibition, all right? When we're inhibiting, we're decreasing something's levels. Decreased guanidoacetate levels, this is correct, okay? We're decreasing a, um, a substrate in the, in the previous steps here, okay? We're decreasing this, this makes sense. We're inhibiting through feedback, negative feedback. Increased creatine phosphate levels, this is wrong, okay? This is wrong. If we are inhibiting this, we're not going to be able to even make creatine phosphate. Okay. Decrease creatine phosphate levels. Again, we don't have any information on this. All right. Although actually this is true. We're going to have decreased creatine phosphate levels if we're not even having this is blocked. All right. So it could either be B or D. However, inhibition feedback, a type of feedback would go feed back to the pathway. Okay. This is in front of the pathway. We need feed back, back to the pathway. Therefore, 42 is B. Bacteria can make amino acids that are not found among the 20 amino acids in mammals' bodies. Which of the following amino acids might be found in bacteria, but not in the body of a mammal? Okay, let's look for an amino acid that's not in our bodies. This is tyrosine, uh, valine, glycine. Oh, but they give us the, all right, we're going to have to find which one's R and which one's S, okay? Remember, guys, all amino acids are S in the human body except cysteine. Cysteine is R, okay? So none of these show cysteine, so in order for these to be in the human body, they all have to be S configurations. So let's see. Number one would be here. Number two would be here. Number three would be the hydrogen back here. One, two, three. We are going counterclockwise. Counterclockwise means we are S. So this is in the body of a mammal. All right. Two. We got a hydrogen back here. This is one. This is two here. I'm doing the priority groups. All right. Comment down below if you want me to make a video about this. It's pretty easy. All right. One, nitrogen has the highest priority, and then followed by this carbon, because this carbon is bonded to an oxygen, oxygen. So one, two, then three. So one, two, three. I'm going in a 
counterclockwise. All right, this is S. This one is, okay, let's see. We got a nitrogen one, two, yeah, one, two, three. So one, two, three. No, we can't have them all S. This is definitely R because these two are definitely S, so this has to be R. Let me look at it a little closely. Hold on. All right. This carbon, one, is here in the nitrogen. Two is over here. Oh, and this one is a carbon. So one, two, three. One, two, three. No, there's no way. Hold on. Let me go to the whiteboard, guys. I'm having a little moment in my brain right now. See, we all have these moments, okay? I actually posted on my channel. Unlike other people who are like, yeah, I always know the answer a thousand times percent, okay? All right, here we go. This has to be one. This has to be two. And then this has to be three. Oh, okay. You know why? This is S, but we have to convert it to R because the hydrogen back here is a wedge. We need the hydrogen to be uh, a dash. All right, so this is R. So this one is the answer. Okay, three is the answer. We do not have an R, this amino acid, an alanine. We don't have an R alanine in the human body. We only have an S alanine. Therefore, 43 is B. Which of the following statements is correct with regard to the role of creatine phosphokinase? All right. We see double arrows, ATP. All right. It is involved in the committed step. No, it's not committed. Okay. Double arrows means it's not committed. Okay. It means it's reversible. A single arrow means it's a committed step. It stabilizes the transition state in the formation of creatine from creatine phosphate. Yeah, it's an enzyme. That's what it does. It lowers delta G. Make No. It raises no enzymes do not affect the delta G. They don't affect, they don't make something spontaneous. Enzymes do not have that ability. Enzymes only have the ability of stabilizing the transition state so that a reaction can proceed faster. Okay. So the answer for this one is B. All right. And that's, all right. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys in the next video.